Let me just quickly introduce myself. As I said, my name is Bill Blunden. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at CorelSense. Um, I've been doing this for a very long time. I wish I was actually as young as the guy who's their photograph on, the, on this slide. Um, but I've been doing this uh, across many different venture-funded high-tech companies uh, and many large global corporations as well as, as a uh, developer initially and then as a senior executive in technology and then into marketing and sales. Um, and done quite a bit of consulting with large corporations around the world, particularly Global 2000 companies. Um, this morning we're, we're joined by a, a really exceptional guest, someone who's a, a worldwide expert on Oracle Forms and the e-business suite. Her name is Mia Ehrman. Uh, I'll let her introduce herself in a second, but uh, again, we're, both of us uh, know quite a bit about the space, and Mia particularly is someone who's both consulted in this for a long time and has some knowledge from her days at Oracle. So why don't I introduce you to uh, Mia Ehrman and let her introduce herself. So I'm going to switch the slide, and Mia, I'm giving you control of the keyboard right now. Hi, everyone. My name is Mia Ehrman, as uh, Bill pointed out in his very nice uh, introduction of me. Um, like he said, I've been doing this for <laughs> way too long. <laughs> Every time I uh, see this slide with 15 years, I can't believe how long it's been. Um, and I've been doing it literally Oracle Forms um, consulting and development that whole time. So first I was uh, working for Oracle for about seven years as a support analyst um, and as a local product manager. Um, and then I broke off to be a freelancer, so I had my own little consulting uh, firm where I would do kind of high-level technology consulting in the Oracle Forms world, mainly with uh, everything to do with um, modernization of Oracle Forms, whether that be um, integration, whether that be performance issues and upgrade issues. Um, and finally, we had several customers that were looking to move Oracle Forms to the next generation, either by doing integration with uh, .NET, Apex, Java applications, or even as far as running Oracle Forms on a mobile. Um, so we started a company called Oraclayer, and basically there we provide solutions uh, to wrap Oracle Forms as web services, and therefore we could run it basically on any platform, from the mobile, from the cloud, uh, integration, etc. So today I'm here with my Oracle Forms uh, Oracle Ace expert hat on. <laughs> I'm an Oracle middleware Ace, and we're going to be discussing Oracle Forms performance. So the first question is obviously, why is Oracle Forms performance such a challenge, right? You think that you know, with other applications, you could basically just check measure performance and be able to to figure out where you have bottlenecks and how you can improve performance. Um, what happens with Oracle Forms is is that there are just so many levels to the solution, right? Because they took the solution that was originally client server and kept on enabling it to run um, each version, you know, first client first character mode, then to client server, and now to web, um, it kind of runs as this hybrid application. So on the one hand, you have on the client side a Java applet. Uh, and on that side, you basically get the visual aspects of the Oracle forms with the user interface and Java beans that need to run. Then on the middle tier, you have the actual PLSQL engine and a forms listener, but basically all your business logic is running on that middle tier, whether it's OC4j for version 10 or web logic. And on that middle tier, there are not only a forms listener, which is a Java server, and the runtime engine, but there's also a physical EXE, there's physical process that's actually client server running on that server machine. So doing performance monitoring usually is a very difficult challenge because no other tool could really understand what's happening on that forms process. And then of course you have the database, right? You could have a very, very performant Oracle form system, but if your database is slow, nothing will help, right? You, if you're querying data from that database into the form system, the database has to be performant as well. So it even gets more complex when you start thinking about high availability, right? It could be that you have several desktops um, and internet applications running 
several Oracle HTTP servers, right, which could be on a separate server or on the same WebLogic server. Then you could have several WebLogic servers or several IAS servers load balanced, and then you could have several databases in a cluster or load balance. So basically it could be, you know, not only do you have to understand which layer of the application is having a problem, but you might have to understand which host actually has the problem. So basically this is the type of environment that we're dealing with, and we have to win with this environment, so we have to figure out how we could effectively performance tune our Oracle Form system to make it that the forms are very performant, um, and that's what I'll be discussing today. And we have to try to understand if we have any tools available to us to be able to understand where the performance issues arise, where we can fine tune what we need to be looking at if there's a performance bottleneck, and how we can resolve those issues quickly before they become real problems in the system. Um, and that's what Bill's going to talk about a little bit later. So I'm going to begin with basically uh, our challenge today, like we saw. Um, Oracle Forms has a very complex architecture. There's so many tiers and different technologies, right? So we have Java, we have HTTP, we have this Oracle Forms exit running, we have the database, um, net, SQL net running from Forms to the database. So we have all these different technologies, and it makes it hard to really identify where we have the problem, right? And it always happens, you ask, a user and they come to you and they say, oh, Forms is slow. And you say, okay, what do you mean Forms is slow? What about Forms is slow, right? <laughs> they could barely tell you what is slow in the application, when it happens that it's, you know, they have a performance degradation. So it's really kind of hard because the users can't really describe what the problem is. And once they do describe where the problem is, it's hard to really identify where that problem is. And of course, upgrades brings a whole new level of challenges because you want to be able to identify these problems before you upgrade and, and prove that performance has not been degraded. So um, all of these are challenges that we really need to learn how to conquer when we do upgrades specifically, but from Oracle Forms in general. So the five keys to great Oracle Forms performance um, lead us to really understand, we need to understand that architecture we described earlier, right? That the client that you're running forms on is actually going back to a server to run its business logic and then come back to the client. So if we think about that, the first um, issue is obviously going to be startup time, right? The time it takes for the clients to run the URL, go to the server, download the Java applet, and draw the screen. Um, that's one element of performance that we want to try to optimize. The second is client resource requirements, right? We want to understand what is actually using the client resources and how we can minimize that. We want to try to minimize the amount of network use as possible, right? Because we don't want it to be going every millisecond back to the server, back to the client, and back to the server. That'll obviously create us performance issues. Um, so we also want to try to accomplish as much as possible in one network trip. So not only do we want to minimize the amount of trips we're doing, we want each trip to be as productive as possible. And then, of course, at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about, in general, infrastructure tips, like how can we um, optimize running forms in our you know, web logic or IAS environment. So first, we'll start with minimizing startup time. So Oracle is very sensitive to this uh, startup time issue, um, and Oracle has been adding actually new features uh, in the later versions to kind of help minimize this startup time. One thing they have, which is really a, a neat feature, it's called pre-start. And what that basically allows you to do is to say, when you start the form server, I want you to already start up five applets, so basically five sessions of Oracle Forms that are going to be ready to go. So the minute someone puts a URL, you could send them a live form session and not have to like start up the whole form session. Um, this shaves off a few good seconds from, from startup time. Um, the only thing is you have to be wary that you will have these sessions uh, open, um, you know, prior to startup of the system, and you want to make sure that it doesn't, um, that your startup time, you don't have too many of them open uh, that might make it ineffective, right? So if you have 20 startup uh, forms applets, you might cause performance issues on the server side, so you want to kind of minimize that. So usually I see about five, three to five is usually a good number because usually 
no more than five people will start forms at the same second in any case. Um, another issue with startup time is really perceived performance, right? So a lot of times if you're you know, calling an HTML page and you just see a white screen for like a few seconds, you think it's not loading and you kind of would hit your, you know, users would hit, the, hit refresh and kind of try to figure out what's happening. But if they see a message saying, you know, page loading, please wait, they would probably wait like a good 30 seconds, if not more, till the screen loads. So Oracle Forms is quite similar. They have two issue images um, that are, they're able to include in the form system. One is called the splash screen. And this image is something that will show immediately upon running the URL. Okay, it's, it's, it's found in the Oracle Forms um, configuration file, which is called formsweb.cfg. Um, the parameter name is called splash screen equals. And you just put there a name of a GIF file. So it could show any basic image. So if you want, you can make an image that says, you know, a logo of the company name and, you know, please wait while our system loads. And then the second thing that comes up is actually a background image. So in that same file, the Forbes Web CFG file, you could put a background image. So instead of seeing the white of the browser window, you could see some sort of watermarked image. So that too, you could put a kind of image of your application. So when someone starts up the system and sees this splash screen that says, please hold on, and they see this other image of your application, it kind of already feels like the application is partially loaded. So it feels like they've already, you know, started to load the application and it gives you a uh, kind of understanding of a faster performance than it might even be. Um, another thing that's really important on startup time is uh, to minimize the amount of items that are displayed on the first canvas. How Forms works is, is that the Java applet designs everything you see on the screen um, when you start up the screen. So anything that's visible true or raise on entry true will be drawn on the screen even if they're not actually showing. So a lot of times people have raise on entry true to 20 canvases and then they only show one canvas on top. The Oracle form will actually be drawing all 20 and then put one on top. So you might want to play with uh, the raise on entry and the visu visible um, properties in the property palette to be able to only show the images, the items that are required on the first screen, um, as well as to break up larger modules into smaller modules. Um, calling a new FMB file is actually a less um, performance problem than having one form that's like two megs in size. So it, you might be better off having smaller modules with less canvases and less uh, windows. So as a best practice, I usually say that no form should have more than five canvases and three windows. Okay. Again, these are all kind of tips for best practices. I don't expect anyone to go back and like redevelop their system and change all their forms in order to implement these tips we're giving today. But if you find a form that's particularly slow, you might want to go in there and check what's going on and implement some of these tips on a specific form. So that's why we kind of go through these things. Um, the second issue, the client resource requirements for Oracle Forms are basically focused around drawing the elements on the screen. So the more elements you have on the screen and the heavier the elements are, the more client resources are going to be used. So the first thing that's really most important almost is to reduce the amount of boilerplates. So what happened in the older versions was the prompt or the title of the field was not a property of the field. It was actually graphical elements that was on the screen, that was on the canvas. Um, so if that's the case in some of your forms, there is a way now to do what's called attach prompt. There's a photo of it here, which basically says that this label of text is attached to this field. That will give you dramatic performance enhancement. So if you look at your system and it's been upgraded from Forms 3 or from Forms 4 and your prompts are not connected to the field, this could really lead to performance uh, degradation. And you might think of going into forms that are particularly heavy and attach the prompt in this manner. Another thing that you have to understand is how Forms works is the network call between the server and the form is basically a list of commands that you want the Java applet to design on the screen. So, for instance, in this case, we would get a message from the server saying the word, the location of the customer should be in this location field, which is 
found at position X and position Y. Okay, that would be one sentence of metadata. So when you're drawing things on your screen, such as circles or arcs, because there's no X and Y axis, they have to send every millipixel of the circle and of the arc. Okay, so when you're adding design elements to your forms, try to keep that in mind and try to replace anything that's circular or rounded with squares or lines, which will then make it much, much easier to send the commands between the server and the client. When we're talking about network, we also want to try to minimize the amount of network use. Um, and the first thing, of course, is to try to put all of your icons, all of your images, into jar files. Basically, the way we work is you have the ability of, on the web, when you have all the icons on the toolbars or on the screens, those could all be put into a file, a kind of zip file called a jar file, that when you download the applet at the beginning of the session, it will also download that zip file, that jar file, full of the images to the client, um, to the desktop, basically. And then when you run your form system, instead of going back to the server to download all those images, which are sometimes can be quite heavy, it will just take those images out of the local cache. Okay? This gives nice performance enhancements if you have um, systems that have many images um, that are especially large images. Um, if you're interested in this, um, I will give you a, a link to my blog later in the chat window. We have a, a help to do how to basically put your GIFs in a jar file and how to implement that in your form system. The next is, of course, mouse triggers. I'm sure you've been hearing about this if you actually move, moved your forms to the web. Uh, mouse triggers really increase uh, traffic. So the, the key is never to use mouse move tr uh, triggers and never to use uh, mouse triggers on the module or block level. Only use them on the item level. So if you have things such as mouse down, um, it will always trigger a mouse up, even if that hasn't been actually mm -hmm. coded into your form system. Okay, so the best thing for mouse triggers is to basically only use when mouse double click and only use it on specific items. Other than that, I would really stay away from them and try to accomplish what you used to do with mouse triggers with Java beans. Okay, so there's a lot of Java beans that do things um, with, with mouse manipulation that might be interesting for you to check. Uh, be wary of the word synchronize. So if you guys have been developing forms for many years, you will for sure know the word synchronize. Synchronize was basically like saying abracadabra for Oracle Forms support analysts. Anytime something would be wrong and the form would be acting strange, they would tell you to put the word synchronize. <laughs> synchronize basically means refresh the client. Okay? The problem is, is that if we refresh the client when we're in the web, basically that means to redraw the entire canvas. Um, and that is a pretty heavy, um, pretty heavy, heavy activity on the Oracle form side. So try to be wary in, in its usage. Again, you don't have to go and remove it from everywhere. But if you see a lot of them, try to reduce the number. Uh, the same thing with timers. In the past, we used to do timers for things like progress bar or refreshing a page, etc. Today, there are Java beans to replace all those things. Um, again, at the end, um, you have my email address from the beginning. I'll be happy to send anybody um, a list of Java beans that are available to do all different types of functionality, if that's of interest to anyone. Another thing that is very um, good about this new way that Oracle Forms runs is, is that it has a very interesting um, ability of grouping properties. Okay, so like we were talking about that the Forms sends a message to the server and back and forth, what it would do is if it has several functionalities, one after the other, that are the same uh, trigger, like set item property for instance, it will only send one message. The message will be set item property. And then it will say text item 1, 2, 3, 4, and its um, resulting property. So basically, if you group settings into like groups, or you promote similarity by using object libraries or visual attributes, those things are really fine-tuned 
So work very quickly on the web. So again, if you're creating a new application, we highly suggest you use object libraries and visual attributes for your items um, as a best practice moving forward. And again, if you find a form that's particularly slow, um, this is a nice way of fine tuning it. So like we said, try to do event bundling. Instead of having three triggers when you leave a field, right, when item exit, when validate item, when next item, try to group everything into one trigger and not have three triggers that fire at the exact same time. Try to use object libraries such as PLL for code. Um, minimize the use of graphic items if you can. Um, you don't have to have, it's better to have an image, a larger image than you know, 20 different lines that the forms has to actually draw on. Um, and of course, subclassing is, is very, very efficient uh, because Oracle basically built um, that the network round trip to with metadata that will minimize the amount of code if you use subclasses. And finally, we're talking a little bit about performance tips. I sometimes get to customers and they're like, wow, this application is so slow and Forms 10 is horrible and I don't know why it's so slow. And then I look at the server and they're running like, you know, one CPU and, you know, two gig of memory and I'm like, what do you expect? Like a slow server is not going to run anything fast. And you really have to think about things like that. You really have to think about things like sizing before you move to production. How many users are going to be after, have to be running the system? How many users concurrently are going to have to use the system? What type of size are your modules? The bigger your Oracle Forms FMB files are, the more memory you're going to need for your application server um, machine because that means there's going to be more things on the client side to process, okay? So you basically, the bottom line is you can't think without brains, right? You have to configure your server with enough memory and with enough CPU to be able to handle the load. Um, we're going to talk a little bit later on about how we can determine, you know, what we're going to need for that load. Um, I definitely, definitely recommend everybody do some sort of performance testing before moving things to production. Can't tell you how many systems I've looked at where I'm like, you know, did you guys do any type of testing? Like who would think that you could run, you know, 350 users on one server with two CPU? Like that never would have worked, right? So people just kind of put it out there. Um, another thing is you can't put it out there and leave it out there. You have to be constantly monitoring these types of servers because what happens is I was in a large organization where we built the server and we were pretty sure we had 150 users. And then like, you know, three months later it was getting really slow and there was a huge performance problem. And then we looked at the server and we had 800 concurrent users. Why? Because some other telemarketing, you know, um, group decided to add a bunch of people before Christmas to do some sort of promotion and they added 300 telemarketers without telling anyone and added the users. And all of a sudden, you know, we hadn't done sizing for that type of thing. So you really have to be monitoring how many people are using the system and, and if you have some sort of growth spurt um, to be able to handle that um, in your infrastructure as well. Uh, another one that's actually a good tip is to have um, the application server close to the database server physically if possible. Um, a lot of times you have people with, you know, different um, sites to their organization, you know, it might be silly to have the database in London and the application server in New York and your users in Texas. So try to think a little bit about, uh, if possible, of course, uh, geography in your infrastructure. And of course, I cannot stress the importance enough of monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. Always have an idea of what's going on in your system, where can improvements be made, or have things change in your environment and some sort of idea on eyes on your system to know what's going on. Um, so to hear a little bit more about performance management of Oracle Forms um, in terms of, you know, more monitoring the environment, um, I'd like to call once again <laughs> upon uh, Bill to, to tell us a little bit more about uh, the monitoring aspect. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Jimmy. That was uh, some great stuff. And, and just as a reminder, um, you, at any time you can type uh, a question or comment into your uh, chat box. 
Me and I will uh, answer those towards the end of the presentation. And certainly, anytime you'd like to contact Mia or me, we can do. We have our email addresses uh, as part of the presentation, and you can contact us at any time. So uh, we're right on time. We'll have lots of time for questions uh, at the end. But let, let's just move on and talk about a couple of other issues. So Mia talked about uh, performance of Oracle forms themselves. What you, as developers or IT professionals, could do to tune your application to rewrite the code update the code and look for some opportunities to try to uh, get the last measure of performance out of uh, your application. But there's some other issues that uh, are important to performance of Oracle Forms and really any other technology. Um, things like how do you measure performance? I mean, again, it's a very subjective thing if you don't have the numbers. Some users will think it's fast, some slow, unless there's some real good tools that allow you to define exactly what the performance is across a variety of users. Um, it's not an objective comment. Next question is, how can you spot changes in performance over time? So again, uh, if you take the advice that Mia just gave you and tune your application, that's wonderful. You'll get it running more quickly. The question is, does that performance improve over time, stay the same, degrade over time? It's important to constantly monitor, monitor these applications and make sure that um, they perform at peak performance over time. And finally, when you're ready to retune the application, how do you do that in real time? What kind of information can you gather in real time uh, so that you can uh, tune the application as quickly as possible? So first thing you need is a very forms-aware tool, not just some general performance or network monitoring tool, but something that understands uh, both Oracle Forms and Business Suite. Uh, you need something which is, understands both the users, uh, where they are, what they're doing, is there a difference in performance based on where the people are located or what device they're using, but also be able to track the transactions because we live in a world now in IT where everything is connected to everything else. The, the old days of Oracle Forms being a, a monolithic uh, kind of environment that was uh, hermetically sealed and could be tuned uh, as desired. It's kind of gone. You know, we're connecting everything to everything, and um, and a transaction may go to Oracle Forms and may jump off to someplace else, go through a middleware component, go out in the cloud, come back to Oracle Forms. There's a lot of aspects to performance in an Oracle's form uh, forms application, which are not forms related. They're related to the network performance. They're related to other applications which may be connected. So again, uh, it's important to monitor, be able to monitor. Uh, the transactions, and also the real users. And again, uh, something I think we talk about all the time because it's very important, to, to be able to have some technology that lets your teams communicate with, you, with each other with a common set of facts and a common set of reports so that people can collaborate together on finding solutions to problems, not sit around in the room uh, pointing at each other, yelling and screaming about, it's your fault, no, it's your fault. Uh, we've all been in those situations, and it's important to have some kind of software tool that helps you bridge the divide between development and operations, between uh, the business owner and the technology people. Uh, our SharePath software, uh, you won't be surprised to find, is uh, exactly that technology. It's uh, designed and specifically tuned for the forms runtime, um, the Java, .NET, C++, other kinds of environments. Um, it's intuitive, works very well for everyone, operations, support, development, and business owners. Most importantly, no application code changes. There's nothing to install in uh, your forms applications. We do the monitoring outside without you worrying about the details in your application. Um, we also really do a great job of monitoring very complex transactions. Uh, from forms to inside forms, outside to the outside world, and even to uh, to the cloud as well. Um, no manual modeling of dependencies. We do auto detection of all those sorts of things. So let's let's take a look at the five performance management uh, keys for Oracle Forms in your business suite. I'll go through these very quickly so we meet our time deadline. First one is uh, to track all user requests through all components, hop by hop. As I said, very interconnected world. Uh, forms is not monolithic anymore. Uh, 
when you talk about users experience and when you talk about transaction performance, that's a multi-technology heterogeneous question, not just the forms question. Uh, two, manage the user experience, use transaction names that people can understand, and I think generally uh, try to build application uh, tools, uh, monitoring tools, which let people of all different backgrounds understand what's going on, not have to understand the complex IT jargon. Um, third, understand how all components interact. Fourth, leverage advanced analytics so people can share one com one uh, version of the truth across all departments and all functional areas and make sure that all stakeholders stay on the same page over time as the system evolves. So let's spend just a minute or so on each one of those things. Track all user requests throughout all hops. So again, uh, just in a, a fairly simple forms application, talking about an applet probably connected to Apache, some other web server, to uh, an Oracle container or web logic, the forms runtime, one or more databases, and then the actual SQL code that gets written behind it. Me did a good job of describing that earlier about the multi-tier and complex architectures. Um, so when you're looking to find a problem or trying to tune performance, it's important to have some software that lets you do all those things. Something that lets you look at the names of the applets, what web servers they're connected to, the specific calls through uh, OSQLJ and WebLogic, the web service all the way down to the level of a SQL statement while you're also looking at network time, uh, browser rendering, and some kind of anything else related to um, these kind of performance issues. It's important to see everything in one place and then be able to drill down so you can understand not just uh, what's going on in general or what IP address is causing problem or what server, but actually the line of code that's causing the problem. Um, use transaction names that people can understand. Like you, I've probably seen many of these things where a, a transaction name is a long numerical string or some cute name that someone's dog or uh, sports hobby or something else. It's really important, as this slide shows, to have things listed as um, wire transfer uh, company names and so on, the transactions that, again, not just link inside Oracle Forms, but the application to other systems which may be on the outside of the network. Um, understand how all components interact. Um, again, you don't want to have to constantly worry about each component. It's important that you have a tool that allows you to auto-detect your current environment but also detect changes over time. So if a new component gets added, uh, that should automatically be added to your view of the transaction sequence, um, not just something that you have to then struggle with to adapt. Uh, should auto-detect, the auto-detect should happen in real time. There should be no manual modeling. The tool should do this stuff for you. You focus your time on using the tool to increase performance, not on making the tool do its job. Fourth point, advanced analytics. Again, trying to answer um, with some simple reports and analytics some real business and IT questions, like are we meeting our commitments? Um, so get a look into transaction behavior over time. Um, understand whether your performance meet is meeting a service level agreement or some other commitment you, you or your company has made to a customer or to another organization. If you look at the top uh, image here on this slide, uh, here's an example of uh, a tool looking at specific transaction performance as either red, yellow, or green. You see a bundling of um, many of the transactions are green and working, but it's also important to see the outliers and be able to drill down on those and try to understand uh, the details of why things are not performing as you expect. Um, also important to see what's changed. So if the day after you implement all of me as good ideas, you have a perfectly tuned and running application, call that your baseline. And then look at look how the system either uh, stays the same or degrades over time and be able to understand where the performance is suffering, not just the fact that it is. And then 
when you're finally spotted a problem, be able to drill down and try to figure out the exact detail of why the performance problem is happening. What's the IP address? What's the server? What's the application? How many users are impacted? And again, all the way down to the line of code that is potentially causing the bottleneck. And finally, th this is one I think we don't talk about it enough as IT professionals, which is even within the IT group, there are lots of different people. There's developers, there are operations people, capacity planners, architects, uh, managers, and, and so on. Um, often they have their own tools, they have their own expectations and backgrounds. Sometimes even within IT, it's difficult to communicate well. Um, there's an awful lot of finger pointing when things go wrong. And that only gets work worse as you move up the food, uh, food chain outside of IT and into the business units. Uh, it's important that you have technologies that allow you to have a single version of the truth that everybody agrees to. Uh, something that provides streams and reports that everyone can understand using nomenclature that everyone understands and really try to remove the whole idea of a SWAT team trying to sit in a room and fix a problem and really think more of collaboration of professionals working together to try to improve not just the application but the business process that it implements. So let me summarize um, now and then we'll, uh, we'll go move on to some questions. Uh, and again, we're right on time, so we've got uh, a bunch of time for questions. But, you know, the reality is that performance is crucial, not just in uh, Oracle Forms and eBusiness Suite, but across the, across the board. Um, there's very few companies in the world, if any, which are not software-driven companies. Um, even if they don't have an e-commerce site or some fantastic uh, web uh, offering, um, the internal operations of the company still operate on software. Uh, forms and EBS uh, bring some real performance challenges as well as migration challenges. So it's important to tune those as much as possible as an individual application inside the technology stack of Oracle, but also how those connect outside to other applications, whether they're homegrown applications uh, or commercial applications. Uh, it's important to utilize the five keys uh, that Mia talked about to improve your performance, but then also try to focus on developing tools, processes, and techniques to let you monitor performance and measure performance and share information about performance over the long term. So let me move on now to the next section. Move on now to the next section. Answer some questions. Answer some questions. Uh, please do that please by uh, your chat button, your chat, chat, chat screen. We also we have, have uh, this system being system recorded, so we will be happy to send you a link to this if you'd like to refer to it in the future. We'll send you a copy of these slides and please contact, contact me or Mia yeah. anytime in the future. We'll be happy to answer any question you may have. So please, if you have a question, feel free to answer it now. Uh, ask it now. Ask I thought I would just tell a funny story. Basically, um, how how I got involved with Coral Science, right? That uh, how I, I'm ending up uh, doing a webinar with them. We were at a customer site, and basically, um, everyone's complaining about the form system that the form system is so slow, and that they moved to 11G and it's very slow. And it got to the point where like the problem had been escalated um, all the way up the chain to, to Oracle, where like they were debating. Uh, leaving the form system because it was so slow and basically I was looking and I just couldn't understand why they thought it was the forms like yes it was very slow um, when they did a specific query but I and that there was a lot of business logic wrapped up in the forms for that but I, I just couldn't believe that it was a form system because uh, I've been working with 11G in plenty of other places and we would seen such better performance so uh, we called on uh, the CoralSense uh, team and basically uh, we did an interesting uh, little trial there where you know in record time they basically found out that the only performance area that had a problem was a specific form and a specific button and once they drilled down to that button they saw that um, one query was taking a very long time um, and then when they looked at the history they found out that a DBA had deleted 
um, an index on a table in the database. So after all their yelling <laughs> of Oracle Forms is slow, in the end it ended up being a database problem that they added the index back to the database and, and everything was uh, really fast. So I, for one, was, was quite impressed that they were able to kind of pinpoint to that degree of like, you know, find the button and then drill down into the database and drill down even to the, to the SQL statements. Uh, I'd never seen that type of granularity before for Oracle Forms. I'd seen it for other tools. Um, so we've been kind of working with them um, ever since in, in this area. So Great to hear that. I, for one, love that story. So, um, <laughs> I'm sure you do. I have a question. Um, it sounds like one for you, which is, uh, it's a question about what's the future of Oracle Forms? Where is it going? Should we invest? Should we evolve it? Should we do something else? Do you have some thoughts on where Forms is going? Right. So this, this question is always makes me smile because it doesn't matter what the webinar is about, inevitably, um, it always comes back to that, right? Like, what is our level of investment in Oracle Forms? Should we be investing in upgrading and performance tuning and monitoring and perfecting the Oracle Forms system when inevitably um, it's on its last legs? Um, the truth is I've been doing a lot of work with Oracle recently and in my opinion, if you would have asked me if Forms is dead three years ago, I would have said faster than today. Um, Oracle has a renewed commitment to Oracle Forms, primarily because they started redeveloping uh, the eBusiness suite in um, ADF and Java technology. After about you know seven years that they've been doing it, they realized that you know a lot of places it's just reinventing the wheel. Like they have no business need to do it and it's taking tons of time and millions and millions of dollars to redevelop something that's working effectively that you know users are happy and it's getting the job done. So Oracle kind of put a new statement of direction in place for their vision for the future of Oracle Forms whereby they're moving forward with Oracle Forms um, and going to continue to maintain and even upgrade the product. 12C has many new features uh, really fun stuff, um, you know, video support, audio support, etc. that hasn't been available till now. Um, they're working very closely with us at Oraplayer uh, to be able to provide uh, Oracle Forms on iPads and tablets and mobile version of Oracle Forms, as well as running Oracle Forms from the cloud via web services using Oraplayer. So I see their commitment to working with us and to kind of ingraining our solution into a kind of joint solution with Oracle Forms. So, so I see this renewed commitment. And Oracle's vision moving forward is basically to keep the form system as it is, getting the job done for that, for the existing system in maintenance mode. And then if you have new applications that require new business needs, um, that it's a whole new system, of course you could pick any next generation technology to move forward with that. Or if you have the business logic in an existing form system, you could keep the existing form system running in Oracle Forms and yet expose that business logic as web services using Oracleer to run from mobile devices, tablets, uh, or even .NET, Java user interfaces uh, using Oracleer. So, you know, we really see this vision of Oracle uh, moving forward. Uh, basically, the, the, the senior vice president, when I asked him, you know, what's the future of forms, he said, you have nothing to worry about, you'll retire before forms. <laughs> so I think they have a commitment, at least for the next, you know, 20 odd years. Okay, next okay, question, next question. Is probably for me, which is, um, what other technologies does CorelSense support? Um, short answer to that one is, it's a very long answer. Um, we really try to focus on new, legacy, and packaged applications. So we support uh, modern programming languages like Java, .NET, so on, older ones like C, uh, legacy applications which you may have developed uh, many years ago and ones you developed yesterday. Uh, lots of different packaged applications uh, from the major software vendors, middleware components, enterprise service buses, uh, transaction monitors, all kinds of things. And I think importantly, we're one of the few companies, and this is a very important for Oracle Forms company uh, customers, 
Uh, we're only one, one of few companies that monitors not just browser-based applications, but rich desktop uh, environments as well, whether native or Citrix. Um, another question, Mia, for you, very good question. Um, what does Aura Player do and what kind of services or software do you provide? Um, okay, so Aura Player basically is an Oracle Forms modernization solution. Uh, we started out about five years ago um, as part of a project at a specific company to integrate a Java uh, user interface with Oracle Forms where they wanted basically that their Oracle Forms system could run um, from Java in a really integrated environment. So we built the ability of wrapping Oracle Forms as a web service. And then the Java user interface would run business logic from the Oracle Forms. Um, right away we saw that we had kind of opened the black box, so to speak. So we started kind of playing around with these web services. Um, and recently we've been very um, into the mobile world. Uh, we've been doing very interesting things running Oracle Forms from Oracle Apex, from ADF Mobile, from Oracle ADF. So um, using our solution with Aura Player, you basically could open the Oracle Forms environment up to be able to run existing Oracle Forms business processes from basically any user interface. Okay. Um, other questions people may have? Great. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> right, Coral Sense, right. thanks for inviting me. Great. And uh, thank you, Mia, so much for your uh, insights. Again, we'll be uh, happy to answer any questions by email. We will send you a hard copy of the slides, and we'll send you a link to a recording in this presentation if you'd like to look at it later or share it with a, with a, a colleague. Thanks again. Thanks. And again thank you, Mia. Thank you.